Hello there, so I'm Jeffrey Schmidt and this is going to be my video about my experience with the Sire Marcus Miller P7 bass. So I have this bass here for you. I'm going to share with you how it sounds a little bit. Before I go any further, I want to remind you that in my videos I put the chapter markers in the description box or sometimes in the comments so that you can jump around, click around the different parts of the video if you like. So I have this base that I bought recently that's still on trial. I can send it back if I like, but I don't think I'm going to at this point. Uh, and I'm going to let you hear a bit, little bit about it. And I'm going to tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Um, also, I'm going to compare with the bases that I've been using before I got this one. So this is a sort of old beginner base. It might be the equivalent of the uh, Squire Bullet today or something like that. It's uh, made by Washburn, but it's under the brand Lion or Lyon, depending on how you want to say it. It's L-Y-O-N. And it's, so it's a really cheap base. And I'll compare the sound of that with the uh, the Sire P7 at the end of the video. Uh, the, although the, the only thing I did to upgrade it is I put in Fender Vintage P bass pickups, which has improved the sound of it quite a bit. So there's that one. And then I even have, I even have a third bass here. This is a, a bass that I kind of share with my wife, but I haven't liked it so much for recording. And this is what? It's a quart. Right, it's a sand, designed by Sandberg, uh, manufactured by Court. I'm going to try to find the, uh, the model number and put it in the description. I can't remember what model it is right now. Uh, I'm, so, I'm going to play these basses for you at the end of the video. Uh, to start with, let me just tell you, for those of you who don't know, I'm a guy that grew up on 90s rock. So that's where I come from, and I've noticed with time that therefore I kind of like the rock bass sounds. I'm originally a guitarist, but I, I love recording. So of course I want to try to record a whole uh, band properly. And so I've gotten, I've realized over time that I really like the P bass sound. And that's part of the reason that I moved away from this guy because it doesn't really do a P bass sound very well. Uh, but my wife still likes it and she still plays it and uh, and that's cool when we play concerts or whatever so um, but yeah it has a this one has actually a humbucker and a single coil here but when I test all of them together I'm gonna basically be only doing the single coil here so that we're testing basically the closest to a P bass sound we can get um, so what is it now that I like and I don't like about this bass. First of all, it's a great value for the money, as many of you uh, have probably seen if you've read a little bit about this bass. I live in Europe and I picked it up for 400 euros at the, uh, on one online store in Europe. Um, and part of my comparison for this is I don't have one, but um, I've gone and tried in stores several times the Made in Mexico Fender P bass, and this is clearly a lot more bass for the money. Um, at 400, over here in Europe at this point, I think they're doing basically 700 euros for the made in Mexico Fender P bass. I bought this for 400, and this outdoes it. It outdoes the uh, the uh, made in Mexico Fender P bass, pretty clearly. Um, so I'm not going to go through all the features, there, there are some good videos out there that I've seen about it that I looked at before I bought this. So if you want to see the exhaustive feature set, or if you want to see, um, you know, uh, somebody go through all the sounds and all the pickup settings and all that that can be done with this bass, there are plenty of good videos out there, I'm not going to do that here. Uh, I am going to share with you, like I said, my opinion versus my other experience that I have with other basses. So, let's see. Um, 
I think the sound of the pickups is a little bit uh, more toward the elegant side. I would have preferred a little bit if it had a little bit more of a rock sound, uh, which is kind of more my style of music, although I do do quite a variety in general. Uh, so it's kind of like, I would describe it as a jazz man's P-Bass kind of. You know, it, it does have a P-Bass pickup, so it's what, what they call a, a PJ, meaning it has a P-Bass pickup, and then it has the uh, bridge jazz bass pickup included. And so you can switch between the two pickups, and uh, so when I test it for you, I'm just going to test it in, on, on the P-Bass pickup, so that I can compare it with my other P-Bass. Uh, properly, and which is what I've been doing, you know, when I've been testing it, deciding whether I'm going to keep it or not. I really uh, like the feel of the neck. It has a thinner neck. At, at first, I was kind of bothered by the thinner neck because uh, it has basically a jazz bass neck. But the more I've played with it, the more I've kind of grown to really like it. Um, I think the the equipment that it comes with, like the bridge. The bridge is quite nice. I did my own setup on this, and it was quite a pleasure to, to adjust the bridge, and it, and it feels great. Also, another big bonus is that you can string it through. I still have the stock strings on here because, like I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to send it back yet. I don't think I'm going to, but I still haven't fully decided. And So I left the strings the way they are, which is strung through the bridge, but it's awesome that you have that choice to either string it through the bridge as normal or through the body. I have a, uh, one of my Fender electric guitars has a, a string through body and I love the, the way, it way it has very much tuning stability and uh, sustain, right? So, um, you know, once I decide to keep it, I'll probably start, probably string the strings through and see how that sounds. I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, another thing that's cool is it has easy access to the truss rod right here in front. You don't have to take off the pick guard or anything silly like that. Um, I think the, the head is maybe a little big and goofy, but you know that's a question of taste. But uh, it's not going to stop me from keeping it, given that there's so many other good things about it. Um, the controls, like I said, I'm not going to go through them all in detail, but very significant controls, and that's the first time that I've ever seen, because I'm kind of a passive P-Bass guy, but again, I bought this because it seemed like such a good value, and it really is, and this, this bass is awesome because of the fact that even when it's in passive mode, you still get a tone knob. That's one of the things that really got me to pull the trigger on this bass because almost all active basses, all you get is a volume knob if it's in passive mode, right? This, this bass, if I didn't say it clearly, this bass can be, be used in both in active mode and in passive mode, and uh, any bass that I've seen like that doesn't give you the advantage of having a tone knob when you're in passive mode, and so that's awesome for me. Um, on the other hand, that's one of the things that I'm not so wild about, is that the, the knobs are kind of cheapy. They're all plastic. And I imagine if somebody was a bit rougher with their gear, it might not hold up so well. I'm the type of person that's sort of very careful with his gear, so I'm not too, too worried about it. But I'm not going to let my kids play with this bass, I don't think. <laughs> Mess around with the knobs. Um, so yeah, it's a little disappointing that they're made out of cheap plastic. Um, some people have said they're disappointed with the, uh, with the tuning. The tuning keys. Um, they're okay. They're not amazing, but they're okay. And, you know, they're better than, uh, than the tuning keys on my cheap P-Bass that I showed you before. The fretboard and the neck are really nice. Feels really nice to play. And like I said, it's kind of a classy sounding P-Bass with tons and tons of options. So, at the current prices, it's just a great, great value for the money. 
So, I think maybe I'll just start playing for you guys. I have, um... So let me tell you what I'm going to be playing through. I'm going to be playing through... This is an Ampeg that you can't see, but it's an Ampeg BA-112 version 1, not version 2, the current version. And I'm going to be using my Sansamp Paradriver DI to just give it a little bit of uh, harmonic distortion, a little bit of saturation, not too much. You know, if, you, if, you're, if you're not used to mixing, you might not even notice, but this amp doesn't have any effects whatsoever, so all of the EQ is just level. And, you know, the tone knob is, is all the way open. I'm going to be using this in passive mode to compare it to the, uh, to the cheap P-Bass that I have. And you'll see some, some differences, I think, right away. So let's go to it. I'm going to turn on the pedal. Turn the amp volume up. Sounds like a little bit. Right, and now I'll jump over to the other P bass so you can hear the difference. Turn off the volume of the amp, turn off the pedal for a sec. Oh. So, again, that was uh, the Sire just in passive mode, which is, I don't know if I'm going to use it all the time, but I'm a fan of the sort of old school sound, so here we go with the cheaper P-Bass, and you'll notice a difference in the sound right away. And you notice how noisy these pickups are. All right, this is, uh, that's another thing that I like about the Sire, is, is it's quite quiet. In some ways, actually, I like the uh, the sound of this P-Bass better because these Fender vintage pickups are pretty awesome. So in rock stuff, when I was testing out the Sire, sometimes I was choosing my uh, cheap P-Bass over it because of the, the, Fender, the, the Fender passive vintage pickups. But it is, uh, you know, pretty annoying to have all that buzzing and noise going on if you're not, you know, for a rock track using this is no problem, but... So there you get a feel for the sound difference and again you can hear the electrical hum when I touch the strings it goes away, but... so that's pretty annoying and I've tried to, just as a side note, I've tried to insulate one of my electric guitars electrically and I haven't succeeded for the moment, so until I succeed on that one, I don't think I'm going to do this, but uh, maybe I should have it done professionally, I don't know. But it is pretty annoying to have that loud AC hum. I don't know if it's the lights or the AC or what, but when you put your hands on the strings, a lot of it goes away, but it is still noisier even, which is kind of annoying when you're recording. So that's, like I said, one of the things that I really like about the Sire more than this one. I'm going to head over to the, uh, the Quark Sandberg bass now. Turn down the amp. Turn off the pedal, unplug. I'm going to plug back into this. here, turn the pedal on, and turn up the volume. So you can hear a big difference in sound here where the, the mid frequencies, the upper mids of the other two basses cut through much more. Like uh, classic P bass where here we have a much more sort of woody, muddier type tone. And here, like I said, just for point of comparison, it's not exactly fair. I'm only using the neck pickup, so of course that gives a bit of a 
Muddy your tone. So, you know, hearing this, I think you can appreciate why I'm not really so into this bass for, uh, for rock. It doesn't really cut very well in the mix, you know, it's kind of it's kind of woody in a way, but it's kind of plasticky in a way. Um, and this one, if you're interested, I think versions of this still exist. And like I said, I'll put the reference of this in the... Oh, there it is. There it is. It's a Court Arona 4. Yeah, it's written on the back there. Made in Indonesia. Oh, and by the way, I didn't say it. The Sire is also made in Indonesia. Uh, and the... Uh, I think this cheap uh, washburn was made in... In China, I think. I don't know. I have to look again. But uh, that's the only way I have to compare all of these three basses on the same level because the cheap bass that I have is only passive. So I thought that might be interesting for some of you that are considering different basses and different sounds. Um, if you're interested in me doing more demonstration type videos like this, I can do more. Um, and also, if you're interested in me doing some more editing to try and get higher sound quality, let me know in the comment section. Uh, at this point, you know, uh, it's kind of hard to get up the motivation to do all the video editing it takes, so I've just basically pointed the bass amp at the camera the best I can, and then, you know, the camera mic is what it is. But obviously, you know, if I was recording the amp with a mic through my audio interface and all that, uh, it'd be nicer in terms of sound samples. So let me know if that's what you would like to hear. If you like the video, please like it. If you liked this content, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. This has been my experience with the Sire Marcus Miller P7 bass and comparison with two other bases, two other electric bases that I happen to have around the house. So there you go. Take care.